Hey guys, Dodge at McGrath Medical. Um, here just to answer a couple questions. We recently had a, a YouTube subscriber ask about finasteride versus dutesteride. And, you know, what are their differences? When do, when do we use them and what those purposes are? Um, both are 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, which bind up uh, 5 alpha reductase, preventing conversion of testosterone to DHT. Um, you know, with finasteride, that's, that's really what we tend to use first, firsthand. Um, it brings down uh, DHT about 70%, while dutesteride is about 90%. Um, finasteride is FDA approved for hair loss, while dutesteride is not. It's mostly been used for uh, benign prostate hypertrophy. Um, you know, there's a lot more studies on finasteride. Um, it's specific to 5-alpha uh, reductase type 2, while dutesteride binds up uh, 1 and 2. 1 not really having much to do with hair. Um, you know, it's about six to eight hours half-life for finasteride, while dutesteride is about four weeks. So, um, you know, we don't often have issues with, with either drug, but if someone were to have problems, they can, they can get off finasteride and, and typically they are gone a little bit faster. Whereas with dutesteride, you know, it's gonna take a little bit longer just because of that longer half-life. You know, DHT does have some purpose outside of uh, just causing prostate growth and hair growth. So, you know, unless you have to do that and go to extremes to uh, maintain the hair, we, we really don't like to, to bring that down unless we have to. So we typically always start patients with um, finasteride, obviously 70% versus 90%. 90% is gonna increase those chances of side effects. Um, you know, later on down the road, uh, yeah, a couple of years, if things are not going as well, then we may eventually switch them over to dutesteride. Um, but you know, once again, that 90%, there is a, a higher chance of side effects. So it's not something we jump right to. Um, if a patient's fully informed and, and they just really wanna move on, I typically am okay with them with them doing that, but I always start with, with finasteride. And you know, after after a time, the finasteride may lose some of its effects. Not so much losing its effects, but it's not as effective um, just because you know time goes on and hair is going to progress. So jumping over to testeride is a possibility. Another question about finasteride that was asked is, what do we do after a year of, of usage? You know, typically we see some improvement up to a year. Um, Really no need to make any changes there because even switching over to do testeride, most likely you will not see um, a lot more hair growth. Usually after that year, you're taking that specifically for prevention of further hair loss. Um, eventually that hair will still slowly recede, but it's gonna be a lot slower than it is normally whenever you are without it. Another question I had was um, for females when they're trying to get pregnant or are pregnant, uh, we really don't necessarily make them get off minoxidil um, while trying, but once they are pregnant, you know, you really want to keep any kind of medications to a minimum. So I'm not going to suggest anything at this time for females when they are pregnant. Um, just, you know, you got a lot of estrogen going on, so typically hair is going to improve without use, any use of medication. And uh, that, that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you guys' comments. Have a good one.